So, yes, thank you. Traditionally, there's always some uh, short conference on the high, uh, hot top table, uh, PhD candidates. So first, um, some simple table. So raise your hand if you're a PhD candidate. Okay, um, PhD holder. Okay, master degree student. No, not right now. No. So, of course, you can ask me your questions anytime. Table, start first. I also have a question for you. Um, do you know where employers are looking for talents for PhD holders? Well, any idea? Okay. Some more ideas? Table? Do you have a second mic for the public, for the audience? better to hear me no no not working so let table my apologies for these technical um difficulties so um actually there's two ways to look for candidates and these two ways they correspond actually to the type of job mark of job market that exists so first, of course, there's the visible job market, meaning that you can find your job offers on some official website or on job boards that exist in different countries. Then there's also the hidden job market, meaning that um, job offers are coming from either from your network or also from some um, employer referral programs or CV databases or also career fairs. Table. So this is uh, being said that um, in the hidden job market, job offers, they are not advertised on the official website. So if you're not in this hidden job market, if you're not um, knowing the right people, it means that you will not hear about these opportunities. Then, of course, in these two parts of um, job market, uh, table can help you to have an access to the visible job market because since you will know what companies uh, expect and you will know also what skills to highlight your application will be more uh, stable for a company and so i leave you the mic for the audience So, and of course, if you are um, also looking for professional opportunities through networking, you will have access to these um, job opportunities that are not yet advertised. And uh, in this case, job offers can also be tailored. Sorry, be tailored to um, really to what you are looking for. So, of course, companies are looking for talents. Uh, because you have added value. And so let's discuss table value of PhD holders. Of course, um, there's a formative professional experience, which is a doctorate. Um, it helps you divert a spirit, also a professional identity, um, some personality through this um, through these different uh, uncertainty or complexity um, um, daily life. And it means also that you actually label yourself um, as a professional who can tackle. Can I have another mic back? So you can tackle really difficult problems and you can 
identify some uh, missing needs that comp a company has. And you can also um, provide some solution and come at um, a provider table, provider of different services. So um, in this case, you need really be proactive in this approach. Um, what exactly we mean by being active? So you need to bring something that company um, don't have yet. So more concretely, in a job market, so there's always two main that recruiters are using, um, two main ways. Uh, the class table, when uh, actually there's some official job offer, and what you need is just to send your written application, meaning you, depending on the cultural differences, but usually in Europe we're talking about your CV, your resume, and a cover letter. Target to the company position. So uh, it's easy way, of course, to, to apply for a, for a job position, but in this case, there's some disadvantages, meaning that you can be classified according to your diploma. So uh, let's take an example. If you are stable in literature and you, you want to work um, as a project manager for some international organization, so maybe um, some recruiters can say that your diploma isn't corresponding to what they are looking for, but you still have the skills they are, that are, they are looking for. The, so it could be some discrimination based once again on your diploma or some um, lack of experience. Table, as I said in the introduction, in some countries, PhD is considered as a professional experience. So you will have your first years of professional experience. In some other countries, you will be considered just a, a fresh student applying for, for a very first job. So it, it means that you will need to quite easily under, explain what a PhD experience table and be able to show all of your skills, really to uh, sort of convince a recruiter that these first three years of professional experience, you have them. On the other side, in the proactive mode, um, when you, of course, looking for a job position through networking and prospecting, it's good for any speculative application. So you don't know whether a company is um, recruiting or not, but you tackle some problems they have, uh, you have identify needs. Once again, your speculative application is targeted concretely to a company. Um, it's also um, a good way if you're thinking about able your own company. So it's also close to an entrepreneurial approach as well. Um, and in this type of approach, of course, benefits is is that you can meet decision makers. So either some business angels that could also help you financially to start your own business, or also some CEOs that could be interested in profiles like yours and they will either hire you or uh, invite you as a collaborator in their project. So you need to position yourself as a service provider and use um, the personal business model table. I just simplified this model. Basically, there's some key elements you need to think about. Key resources, who can help you, what you do, your value proposition, and your visibility strategy. Table element, key resources, it's actually your experience, your skills. And here you need to think about different set of your skills, not just you your scientific skills, but also soft skills, and as well as um, your personality or your qualities. And then, well, your motivations, your interests, um, your values as well, and your network. What can you bring with you? Table, you need to spend some time with yourself and reflect on what you got. Uh, identifying well ideally you need to make a list of different tasks you do on daily basis through this information you can 
identify skills and of course also to see what you love to do on a daily basis and what you do don't love to do and based on this of course you can extract actually some of your values as well if you're feeling that in some activities you have of course skills but you don't exactly know how to name this i advise you to um, recommend you to use a tool which is called uh, my doc pro um, a little bit more details about this tool so it's bilingual french and english because it's it's came uh, it's come from france table but it's still relevant for uh, european countries so um a little bit of history a few years ago like a decade ago um abg with our academic partners and industrial partners uh, there was some a focus group where um like people tried to identify the main skills that all phd holders have and uh well they came up with 24 different set of stable with four um, families, core business, personal and relational qualities, and then business management, um, and career value creation and strategy and leadership. And when you click on any of these um, skills, you can read the description. Through this description, you can go through a sort of auto evaluation, self evaluation and position yourself. Whether you will see also that there's three different um, table steps for each skill corresponding to operational level then managerial and strategic one and through the vocabulary that is used to describe different levels for the skills you can also know where to position yourself and well since the majority of from the audience is phd candidate you will see that for some skills you're on the operational level meaning that you you have some table and you know how to use them in a professional um, context for managerial well of course it means that you are also able to help people um, you have in charge um, and let's let's take an example from um, a business um, from a project management so such a skill all of you have I'm sure but then if you already manage some uh, students or interns you will see that at table a skill use somewhere between operational and managerial level so once again it will help you to learn the the right vocabulary and also to to know how to um, explain the level of each of your skills in front of a recruiter or a future business partner the next element who can help you so this part includes the people table who depend on your work and also and also depend uh, um, to get the job done um, could include your job your supervisor um, anyone actually who can benefit from your work your colleagues then of course if we're talking about more professional um, experience in the let's say in the private sector it could be also partners um, and to table employers and clients what is might be helpful of course is monitoring of different existing job offers to see the titles the skills needed and also of course to identify some recruiters who are interested in phds and another interesting approach is networking which is we are all here to network um, to approach such professionals and also get advice from them if you are not stable with this networking approach i advise you to look um, from last year french italian day we have some also table good networking how to be really efficient um, in this approach the third element is what you do so activities that uh, describe your expertise and well, also can you what can you offer to your uh, potential clients so um table when you collect any of this information try to uh, to ask to answer the question what can you bring new what a company needs uh, what can you improve in their activities and then 
of course, you need to show your strengths. And that well, it also could create some benefits for a company. So for this, of course, efficient communication, meaning that it could be something very clear, concise, using the right vocabulary. And then when you will bring some examples, they will need to use um, storytelling. When, let's say, you can uh, easily talk about your past experience with this star method, meaning situation, task, activities and results from a story. So uh, let's say if you've been helping an organization to reduce costs or risks in their activities, quite in two minutes, three minutes, with this method, you can provide the, the, um, the table. It will show that you know how to do things. And the, um, the last element, of course, you have visibility and how you, can you communicate about yourself and also about your skills and different elements. And here, the first element to think about is pitch. How can you introduce yourself uh, once stable, concise and uh, quick way? According to different uh, context, pitch could last about 30 seconds. If we're talking about career fairs or um, informational days like this one. So very quickly, who you are, what you do, what you're looking for here today. If we're talking about networking discussions, then you can expand um, your pitch to two minutes with the same structure. And of course, what they will is also to be present on professional social media and the maybe the one of the most uh, efficient ones is LinkedIn are you on LinkedIn are you using it I see some movements okay so it it's really the place where you can meet also decision makers from academia and also from industry. So this is the place where uh, you can satisfy different um, ideas uh, for your table. Few words on pitch and how to uh, excel this exercise as well. So we're talking here about two minutes pitch. And uh, as I just told you, the um, the, the um, three elements that includes the pitch, they are very easy. So who you are is your personality. Doesn't mean that you need to recite your CV. Table, 2018, I finished my master's degree. In 2025, I will finish my PhD degree. No, we're talking, we're not talking about this, but really who you are as a personality. And ideally, if you, know who will be your interlocutor you can tailor also this introduction part according to who your interlocutor is and what could be interesting for this person in the table talk about uh, your facts results your achievements because the achievements can also provide well, your past achievements can predict the future will be you able also to perform in a professional setting or not so then there's some, let's say, common uh, troubles with uh, PhD candidates is saying that, well, I never done things alone. There's always um, a team with me. So, of course, table, the fact that you know how to work in a team, and well, as I show in the example, to specify with my team, we develop this. And then, of course, highlight your role in this team organization. What can you bring? Because of course, if we're talking once again about the recruitment process, recruiter is not recruiting the whole team. They will recruit just one person. And in the conclusion, so even once again, you've done table, know what is missing, you have identified some needs, stay open-minded because well, of course, it doesn't mean that uh, during the very first um, exchange, you need to say, listen to me, <laughs> you need to change this and that in your company. Otherwise, it will be a bankrupt in a few years. No, of course, they open minded. So say something that, well, you can bring some expertise. You can, of course, uh, bring some amelioration, but then ask open questions. How also you see PhD holders within your company, what, what you are uh, expecting from PhD holders as well. And then you give um, 
the floor back to your interlocutor. Because once again, pitch, it's not just a way to introduce yourself and say, this is me, hi, and goodbye. No, it, this is the way to launch a discussion. Mm -hmm. That's why you need really to be sure that there's a question table, your introduction, so your interlocutor can actually participate in this discussion, right? So this is, um, in a few words, a uh, proactive approach. We have a couple of minutes if you have questions. And I will share my my table. Any burning questions? Oh, it's Thank you so much for such an insightful presentation.